Hey, let's continue with the book shelf tour. I'm sitting down again and uh, we're into T's and V's, even though this is, I have to admit, now that we're this far into the book shelf tour, that this is just the semi-organized part of my bookshelves. And then past this point, we'll just go into chaos. Might even get into chaos by the end, end of the shelf. So let's let us start. Uh, let's get, we'll start off with my James Tiptree collection. Cause like, I, I like manly men and they're all their writing, or at least that's what, uh, Robert Silverberg, who actually does, uh, kind of a, oh, uh, what, if I remember is a rather sheepish, uh, introduction to this collection of James Tiptree's science fiction stories where he's like, yeah, I, I thought that James Tiptree was a man and I praised him for being all manly, but it of course turned out if you can't tell, the James Tiptree was a woman who was writing science fiction in the, ooh, I think it's 50s and 60s at this point. Who is Tiptree? What is he? Is the name of Robert Silverberg's introduction. Um, uh, these are stories in the 70s, which actually I guess would make sense because that's when uh, Silverberg became kind of more the respected grand old man of SF and not the grinder that he had started off his career as. Um, and, you know, hats off to uh, Silverberg that, like, uh, I can see some other august personages of science fiction going, oh, I was a complete ass, complete fool, and then going, oh, okay, well, yeah, here, yeah, sure. I, you know, and not want to have anything to do with it rather than, you know, hey, I'm going to actually write an introduction and just sort of embrace my, embrace my errors. Um, I have collected a bunch of uh, Warm Worlds and Otherwise. I've collected a bunch of uh, Tip Tree's short stories, which isn't to say that I actually have enjoyed so far what I have read. I find them somewhat jangly, somewhat um, of kind of that bridging thing of between the uh, 50s and 70s of uh, it kind of a mix, it feels like, of... Of, of stories I but admittedly I have not done um, a full 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 selection of so it's she's one of these authors that I want to go back to and actually read and I felt like um, if I didn't collect her books when I found them uh, I would have to probably shell out for a very expensive uh, collected works or something like that whereas I could pick up all these um, pick up all these paperbacks uh, for cheap which you know that's all. That's all what we're going for here is uh, reading on a budget. Uh, the next guy, the next guy is another, um, what I think of more as a short story writer, is John Varley. And this is his first collection. It's called uh, The Persistence of Vision. And I believe it's The Persistence, Persistence of Vision, Vision is the story that I was introduced to him by, by uh, Spider Robinson, who did another science fiction writer who has a wonderful voice who on his podcast did a, um, a reading of the story. And it was a beautiful, beautiful, intense story that like de dealt with disabilities. And um, something about Varley at the very beginning of his career where he was really mining, I felt like some like really rich, and deep and complex stuff. Uh, and uh, this is his, I think it's his first no novel, uh, The Opachui Hotline, which also kind of carried that along. But I found going into his later novels, they suddenly kind of switch to, uh, I don't know, it's a weirdly commercial turn. Maybe it's something that was better for his career, but um, it feels like it's like a completely dif different author. Or at least someone who's just decided, okay, I did that, but I, I that that they didn't want to continue in that vein, and they wanted to be a bit more of a commercial writer. So um, I've I've kept I've kept these two first books of his, uh, and especially the persistence of vision uh, is just um, is a story which I want to revisit because it really really touched me at the time. And as someone who's um, a support worker worker for people with disabilities, I, I can't help but think it maybe had a bit of an influence on me and what um, my career. Now, now I think about this, the details of the story. I don't think we want to go for a one-to-one -one version of that, but yeah, yeah. So that, that's definitely at least that story I would love to revisit. Maybe I should 
give it a read and then give it a little little mini review on uh, on this channel where uh, nothing sees the light of day. Um, oh, and the next is what is actually, it's a chunker, but it's actually only half of a chunker. This is A Suitable Boy by Vikram Seth, but it's volume one. I think I picked it up in a secondhand bookstore. Um, I have somewhere out in the hallway, I uh, shared with my wife, uh, the full hardback edition of this, like double this size in hardback. And it was so heavy that it was like, oh, when I saw I like a single volume uh, hanging around in a bookstore, I went, oh, I'll grab that so I can at least just only have to read that to begin with. And then the other half of the novel have to go through. And this is Vikram Seth doing um, kind of one of those double-decker, uh, multi, multi-storyline Victorian novels, but uh, contemporary and in India. And uh, doing people like kind of like, I think doing people like Trollope really proud. I've actually only got into heavily into Trollope post Vikram Seth, but um, it's one of those guys like after reading a whole bunch of Anthony Trollope, I think I want to go back and, and reread A Suitable Boy at some point and just like, I just remember just enjoying myself so much reading this book. I think, you know, especially at the time it was like, is this a book worth reading? It's so big, but it was like, it was so enjoyable. It was one of those books that like I wanted it to be longer at the time, which is uh, the highest compliment for when you get a doorstop. And uh, the number of authors who can actually make you feel that way uh, is vanishingly small. Even I was just finished uh, The Mirror and the Light by Hilary Mantel. And that was too long of a book for me, even though she is a stunning writer. And it's funny that... Um, um, but Vikram Seth, I don't know if it's like, maybe it's the multiple storylines that actually helps break things up in a way. Because I was thinking about that with uh, someone like Brandon Sanderson, who is nowhere near the talent. You know, he's a good, he's a good engaging storyteller, but he's got nowhere near the talent of someone like a Mantell or a Vikram Seth. But um, he's a good storyteller and it's multiple storylines. It's like, you know, four or five novels. And maybe that's what this is, is four or five novels, but they're all equally good novels all pushed into one kind of unifying story which is yeah yeah can't can't say the enough about it oh there's my other james salter i i was showing him earlier bernie days maybe maybe that other the sport in the pastime maybe that's the one i actually read and then this is the one <laughs> it's one of these authors like i've read one of your books i can't remember which one i should check on my goodreads thing and see if it if it would give me a hint uh yeah, so James Salter again. Um, he has flown jet jet fighters at speeds approaching the sound and uh, uh, that of approaching sound, and witnessed some of our most and written some of our most imperishable fiction. I'm sorry, it's it's lovely green font on on uh, on kind of a brown background, so I won't actually try and read the back of it. James Salter, The Burning Days, with I guess a picture of our author there. Um, looking kind of tentative, but uh, also kind of maybe rocks, Rock Hudson-ish, which may not be the right guy. Uh, then I've got my my W.G. Seabald's The Rings of Saturn and Austerlitz. I believe I've read Austerlitz, didn't understand it at all. Um, I think I remember the writing being being good, but I it, it's one of those, it's definitely a European book in that there's no actual story there. It's more of like essays and remembrances none of which I can remember, which, you know, maybe it's too deep for me. And I just, there, there wasn't anything there for me that I could, too steep. And I just couldn't, I couldn't find purchase and hold on to. It's one of those books I, I, I'm always tempted. It's like, maybe I'll go back to, and suddenly I'll go, oh, I was a dope. And I'll suddenly sink into it and uh, it'll really hit me. Um, I guess it wasn't so opaque that I got rid of it. So you never know. You never know. Uh, oh, here is Grass by Sherry Tepper. Uh, I think when I was listening to the Code, Code Street podcast with uh, Gary K. Wolf and um, Jonathan uh, Stratham, they mentioned her as a uh, kind of feminist science fiction author. Maybe she'd fallen off a bit, uh, but that this was one of her ones to actually try. So I got it and I still haven't tried it. Oh, I've got my uh, little bit of Canadian content here. I've got Peter Watts, Starfish. He did a novella called uh, The Things, which is a um, sort of a sequel, kind of 
retelling of the thing, uh, the uh, John Carpenter version of um, that particular story, but it's told told from the story, the point of view of the alien or the aliens, that consciousness and uh, it being a creature that didn't like have its own, it had a different sense. It had a different idea of what consciousness was and was really confused by human beings. And, you know, the way it treated human beings was sort of wasn't malevolence as much as it was. Well, it was malevolence because that was kind of a scary scary story um he is a very cold fish but he's a really he's a cold fish with a very sharp mind uh and uh i think this is, is this the vampire one like an international uh corporation has developed a facility uh along the Juan de Fuca ridge at the bottom of the pacific ocean to explore geothermal power no it's that's a different one maybe that's i can't remember what that one is i think i can't you know but a uh, hard science fiction author, someone who's like, if you're going to run out of air in space, you will run out of air in space. We're not violating the laws of physics or uh, mechanics for you. You know, it's that kind of like, we're going to follow, we're going to follow everything ruthlessly, logically. Um, maybe his characters aren't as vivid as a case because they're, they're all seen from the outside in a very kind of a cold, cool way. Uh, but very gripping, gripping writer, gripping writer all the same. So yeah, my, my little bit of Canadian content. Ah, here is, <laughs> I will have to have a tour of the books that hold up my, uh, hold up my, um, my um, camera stand. Well, my, my camera phone stand other than just my hand, uh, because I've uh, got Fingersmith over there, which is by Sarah Waters, which I really love. Uh, and I found this in a secondhand bookstore, which is her, one of her other books, uh, the little, the little stranger, which I think was made into a movie, which doesn't sound like it was that successful, but, um, I'm like, uh, Fingersmith, which has been turned into the handmaid, which I really loved. And is also, I think a BBC program, but I really love the handmaid. I watched that turned Victorian England, uh, written by, uh, a uh, contemporary author into uh, Korea in kind of a, a similar historical period of occupied by Japan. Uh, just such, oh, such a, such a great movie, such a great, great book. Uh, so I picked up another one of her books to read the, the little stranger. So I, I will get to that at some point uh, with tiny little type at the back. So I won't bother trying to read it out. Yes. Yes. Um, and let's finish off with my, with, my Virginia Woolf collection, of which, um, well, my favorite, probably because it's the one I can actually remember, also turned into a really good movie with Tilda Swinton as uh, titular Orlando. Uh, Orlando goes through the, after having a conversation with Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth the uh, first, she um, goes through history without aging, though she switches gender uh, and is just a great book on kind of gender and 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 poetry and literature and history yeah just i really love that book and it's it's kind of it's probably fairly straight ahead by virginia wolf it's not um as challenging the language wise which probably did me well for when i actually kind of tried virginia wolf i've probably tried some of her other books here i've got to the lighthouse between the acts and the years um I think I've tried them and I've slightly bounced off them. There's a bit of that stream of consciousness thing that at the time I didn't have the patience for. Maybe I would have the patience for it now. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've kept them because I, I know she's a great writer and I just need to be a great reader <laughs> or at least a middling one uh, uh, to, uh, to, to jump on board that. And I think I will stop there for the moment because, you know, even with my hand braced, I'm getting a little tired. And that's a good warm up to... Uh, going and doing a couple of other videos, isn't it? All right. See you later.